Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel, Living Life with Leticia. Let's just get into our devotion for the day. All right, it says, who has the right to boast? Someone who is a gifted artist, a musician, the top student in class, the wealthy man or woman, the top model, the award-winning actor. That's a partial list and you might add a few more. But what right do any of them have to boast? Who gave them the artistic ability, the musician's ear of voice, the intelligence, the looks, the opportunities? The answer, of course, is God. We didn't earn the right to be born with any of these gifts, nor are people who have fewer advantages being punished. As St. Paul says, if we are to boast or glory, let it be in the Lord. All that we have is gift. We didn't earn it. We don't deserve it. But we do have the responsibility to use and develop our gifts. The artist didn't get up one day, paint, uh, pick up a paintbrush, and bring the first attempt to the museum to be welcomed with open arms. I have known intelligent people who sailed through high school and flunked out of college the first semester because he or she never learned how to study. We have been gifted with faith, but faith, like any other gift, needs to be practiced. I might sound like a broken record, but we need to take advantage of this wonderful season to check and see how well we are doing. Let us show our gratitude for the gifts we have been given by thanking God and using them to the best of our ability. Our prayer is, Lord, we so often take for granted the gifts we have. Let us remember to say thank you and to use them for your purpose. Amen. All right, so today we're going we're going to start uh, with life and health insurance. Of course, those are some of the big things. And now I uh, today they were talking about, or I've heard them talk about um, some sort of open enrollment for those people that are in transition. Um, there's an open enrollment for I guess uh, the um, healthcare.gov where is where you would go. I have not um, looked at that website yet, but I did hear that they are having some sort of open enrollment for those that have been in transition, that are leaving their jobs, have left their jobs, lost their insurance. I pay for hours, um, and here lately it has gone up, and I don't know why it has gone up, because we were under a contract, I thought, with the union, but apparently contract did not hold. Or something. I don't know. But I'm going to check into it and you will know as well. Okay. All right. So today, uh, as I said, we're going to be talking about some of the um, things that we may need to know about our health and life insurance. Well, you will need to have made a decision whether or not you want to stay with your company's insurance, which is like a COBRA uh, insurance policy. With AT&T, they did have COBRA Um but of course that would have made the monthly rate go up as far as what we were paying so i just um kept the insurance as we had it and whatever the insurance is that we were under contract with is what we have right now and that includes my life insurance too it does not however include my spouse's life insurance i did have life insurance on him and now we have to find new insurance but um, and for him, for that, and that's mm. of course, there's some steps that everybody always forget to tell you that you have to make sure that you've got your insurance in place. Now, again, the um, Obamacare or whatever they were they're offering now through the government is a um, a source of insurance. You can also check with some of the local providers and see if and what your rates would be for your health insurance. I didn't, I don't think we qualify for the other, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, and this is news that we missed last time. I guess this. I should have pulled this out. The Social Security Administration says it has a good it has good and bad news for consumers to start 2022. The agency announced that the full retirement age has officially been increased to age 67. <laughs> <laughs> However, 
it also noted that it would be the last year that a change to the retirement age would occur unless action is taken by Congress. That might be a don't hold your breath kind of thing. The last time Congress changed the full retirement age was 1983. So the action is estimated to affect about 70 million Americans and is the biggest change since 1982, which saw a 7.4 increase in benefits. So it tells me workers can now start collecting social security checks when they turn 62. I am included. Yeah, 62. I will be 62 in October. <laughs> yes, I will. Okay. All right. Good news. Good news. Yeah. Okay. It says the benefits will be. Uh oh. But there's an early. There's a penalty for beginning that early. The benefit will be reduced by five to nine of one percent. What does that mean? For every month before a recipient reaches full retirement age, up to three years. If consumers begin withdrawing benefits more than three years or 36 months before full retirement age, then benefits are reduced by five and a half of one percent each month. So that means I ain't going to even be getting what I thought I was going to get. As an example, if a person decided to collect Social Security at age 62, which would be me, then the benefit would be reduced by 30% on a monthly basis to the primary beneficiary. Beneficiary. Putting that into real numbers, someone who is getting a $1,000 retirement benefit would have that total reduced by $300. A spouse's benefit would also be reduced by 35%. If a spouse was receiving 500 per month, they would only get 325. Okay, it says that there's a earned income credit, uh, in earned income tax credit that um, people may be eligible to take. It's Increase to ten thousand dollars, so that's a good thing. The only catch is that the person must qualify and file a file file a federal tax return to claim the EITC. You can visit blah blah blah. They have a child child tax credit. Nobody in retirement age. I mean, there may be some people that are um, getting retirement that still have children. I don't. With the tax season in full swing, also. The Social Security uh, Administration also wants recipients to be aware that there are some new special tax credits that can go toward expenses, uh, tax.gov, whatever. I don't know. But anyway, that is, <laughs> I guess it's okay. I mean, what can you do? You don't have no choice. I mean, It's always something, ain't it? Spring is just around the corner. Summer is coming. So, um, and we know that that comes, uh, with springtime comes into play daylight savings times. They, meaning the government, is voting on whether or not to get rid of the daylight savings time. If the bill is also passed by the House of Rep uh, House and signed by President Biden, Americans would no longer have to set their clocks forward in the spring and set them back in the fall. So, what do you guys think about losing the daylight savings time? I think I would be okay without, you know, messing with that hour because it does mess you up. And I don't know why it does so, uh, such a thing on people, but it does. Normally, when daylight savings times hit, I'm just, I'm either late going or whatever. I feel like I'm off kilter or something. I know it just feels like something's wrong. Something, you know, oh, I'm missing that hour. Where the hour will go? And it shouldn't be like that. But, you know, if we get rid of the daylight savings time, I don't think I would be mad at all. How about you guys? And it says like in Rhode Island, people are experiencing like an unhappy day in November. 
because they are turning off the lights. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> turning off the lights. But they are you losing that hour. And I guess because in that part of the world, it is, um, I guess it already becomes dark early. I don't know. So I think because my, um, my daughter was saying that it is like at five o'clock, it starts getting dark in Nevada. So, you know, it is definitely a, uh, a deterrent when you start thinking about losing some of the daylight. You want to keep as much daylight. I love the daylight, but I get used to going to bed, going to bed, going to bed early in the winter time. I love going to bed early. I don't know why. It just seems like that's the thing to do. When you when you get home, you have your dinner, you put on your pajamas, something cozy, you climb up in the bed. You know, so what am I gonna do with that hour? You know, when the time would have changed and it would have been dark earlier. I don't know what to do with that hour. So y'all help me figure that one out. If they take that hour away in the springtime, I'm cool. I can, yeah, but in the winter time, I need that hour because I want to stay in the bed a little bit longer. Yes, but anyway, um, they ain't going by what I want, unfortunately, for them, um, and you. T <laughs> Fortunately for them and for you too, they ain't doing what I want them to do. Because if it was, you know, hey, it'd be a different story. This is something that I plan on doing. Uh, which is gardening, but this is coming from the consumer consumer affairs. It tells me that uh, while the ongoing COVID nineteen pandemic was affected has affected the supply chain around the world, a recent study conducted by researchers from the University of Georgia found that one industry has been thriving. According to the findings, sales for anything related to gardening gardening saw a significant increase over the course of the pandemic. So I have decided that I was going to garden, not because of this, but because of just the fact that I have plenty of time to do nothing. So gardening is one of the things that I wanted to do. And I love um, growing stuff. So now I have been known to plant and go so I'm going to have a struggle with that. And what I mean by plant and go, plant and go, that means that I plant and then I go. <laughs> I don't come back to water. I don't come back to feed. I don't come back to do nothing but plant. So I'm a harvester, whatever you want to call it. But this is going to be my challenge and I'm challenging myself to, uh, to grow some of my own vegetables in my own garden and I'm going to get a greenhouse and I will girl we got um, girls guys whoever y'all are out there hey y'all we got some good stuff coming up so I want you to always be involved in what I'm doing because what I'm going to be doing is what y'all going to want to be doing as well insurance life and health social security which was on the books to talk about and that was the social security these are things that i'm gonna have to know about so if i gotta know about them then i'm gonna let you guys know about it too so always know this is where you can come for information for your retirement questions we do have some recalls for um for this week there's a torn and glasser at sprouts uh there's it's dark chocolate covered cherries there is a recall this product may may contain almonds i don't know why it should but it do i mean i guess i don't know jergens moisturizer recalled over possible bacterial infection the fda Recalling three to ten ounce containers of Jurgens Ultra Healing Moisturizer. It may be contaminated with a Pleurobacter Jergovi 
bacteria. That sounds real scary, which typically poses little medical risk to healthy people, but it's shown to pose problems to people where weakened immune systems. So make sure you don't use that, Jergens. Return it for your, I mean, it don't say whether return it or what, but RH recalls illuminated mirrors. Loose components in the bulb sockets can lead to overcurrent and overheating. So they're caught recalling about 3,400 mirrors with the lights around them. And this is made by RH, whoever RH is. It says consumers should immediately stop using the recalled mirrors, unplug them and contact RH for your choice of a full refund of the purchase price or refund of the form of a credit. Okay, so that's mirrors. And this is weird. It says Family Dollar recalls FDA regulated drugs, devices, cosmetics, and food. The products were shipped to 404 stores from Family Dollar distribution. The presence of rodents and rodent activity was found at that center. The firm says it is not aware of any reports of illness related to this recall. But what you need to do, consumer who purchased the recalled products may return them to the store where they were purchased without a receipt. Now it doesn't tell, it just says, that's, it says including drugs, medical devices, cosmetic dietary supplements, and human and pet food. So, or you can call this number for what to do 844-636-7687 from nine to five okay and that's for a family dollar recall of fda related drugs devices cosmetics and food hrb recall well not food but your personal hygiene this is a recall on brute and sure uh, aerosol sprays the products contain benzene which is classified as a human carcinogen. Carcinogen. A human carcinogen. Like the stuff that comes from cigarettes? There have been no reports of adverse events to this date, but a list of recall products may be found here. Uh, the products were sold throughout the U.S. except for 150... I don't know what that is. Consumers who purchase the recall products should stop using them if the expiration date is on or before August of 2023, those who have products fitting that description should discard them. Consumers with questions can call 866-615-0976, Monday through Friday. All right, so that is from the Consumer Affairs and getting, make sure that we keep you up to date on things that have been recalled, things that you should be aware of, uh, with your purchasing powers. If there is nothing else for us to discuss today, we will end this segment by saying you always should be and want to be blessed and be a blessing. We love you guys and deuces and see you next time. Like, share, and subscribe too. I'm giving y'all information. Y'all can help me out. Have a sister. Like, share, subscribe down below.